Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and today it's time to go over the weekend's news. Some good news, some bad news, but ultimately I think we're all still in a little bit of a euphoria at what we've seen over the weekend. Celtic take the advantage in the Scottish Premiership title race. Oh, it's been an eventful one to say the least. If you haven't already please make sure to hit like and subscribe it'd be much appreciated it's a new week on the channel i'm sure it's going to be a busy one as we build towards the scottish cup semi-finals this weekend so if you haven't already go down below hit those buttons for all your updates we're trying to get as close to 50,000 subs as we can this year so aye thanks very much what a weekend uh, we discussed it in great depth yesterday what we've seen over the course of saturday and sunday celtic uh, took a massive 3-0 win at Celtic Park against St Mirren, whereas Rangers, they lost to relegation threatened Ross County at Dingwall, it was a 3-2 win for the Highlanders, which means the league table is looking a little bit like this, Celtic 4 points clear of Rangers, which means even if Rangers win their game in hand against Dundee this week, we will still sit top of the table come Thursday morning, fantastic news. We have taken that advantage, that step forward ahead of Rangers, which for a long time looked like it would take a lot of hard work. And don't get me wrong, we have worked hard, we deserve to be in the position we're in. But I, I didn't expect it to happen at this point of the season. I thought we were going to have to wait till we played them at Celtic Park in the split fixtures to maybe leapfrog them in the league table. Um, but here we are, we're in a great position. It's now a case of winning every single game from now to the end of the season and we're champions. Um, it's going to be tough, we're going to have to just be patient and look at each game as it is, a game at a time, but I am feeling optimistic, I'm feeling good uh, where we are currently, we just need to keep the heads down, stay focused, because the split fixtures will be difficult, we should find out some point this week where we will be playing our, our five remaining games and um, you know what order we'll be playing them, a lot of people are already theorising that we might might just get Rugby Park first up, <laughs> which wouldn't shock me. But listen, we know we've got Rangers at Celtic Park, that's the main thing. We need to take advantage of that game. I think that there's still room for both teams to slip up somewhere uh, between now and the end of the season. So by no means is the, the league a done deal. Absolutely not. We need to just remain focused. We can't get ahead of ourselves. Um, it's time to stay humble at this moment in time. I mean, enjoy it. Enjoy the slip up. Um, absolutely, it's a whole point in the rivalry we've got here, but it's it's time to remain level-headed as we move into these fixtures because it's going to be tough. It's especially going to be tough when we've heard about an injury uh, over the weekend. Dyson Maida will miss the remainder of this season. It's pretty much been confirmed by Brendan Rodgers. Here were some of the headlines that broke last night. Dyson Maida, Celtic season over as Brendan Rodgers reveals bitter injury news. Brendan Rodgers went on to say to the media over the weekend that unfortunately I'm not sure we'll see Dyson again this season. I don't expect him to feature too much. It's such a small window for him now. But Liam Scales, he's different. Hopefully he'll be Okay, so we've got a positive update on the injury of Liam Scales, who of course missed the St Mirren game at the weekend. However, Dyson Maida, not so positive. It looks as though his season's over, which I must admit is a bit of a gutter. I did say that this would probably be the case the other day when it emerged that Dyson Maida would miss the St Mirren game with a tendon injury in his hamstring. Just said, you know, with tendon injuries, you tend to be out for a good few weeks. And with only five games remaining this season, there was probably an incredibly slim chance we would see Dyson Maida. That's pretty much been confirmed by the manager. And it is a blow. Uh, despite the criticism that I give Dyson Maida sometimes for how frustrating a player he can be, you already noticed the difference uh, against St Mirren on Saturday without him being on the park. For as frustrating a player as he is, he is influential to how we play and how our attack and set up. Um, it's just generally presented on the park, he has such an influential role in what we do, his pace, his energy, and for what he lacks in maybe technical ability, more than makes up for with his off the ball work and his speed and his, his just general presence, you know, we've seen how much of a tough time he gave James Tavener at Ibrooks last week, we were missing that against St Mirren at the weekend, we were really weak down that left hand side with Yang in the game, um, I'm hoping that Lewis Palmer can come back into full fitness and start games and, and offer maybe a little bit of something and offer that same threat that maybe Maida possesses at times, but they're two totally different players and what Maida has is so unique, dangerously unique, 
Um, the opposition players really don't know how to handle them. We're going to be missing him now from here to the end of the season. Um, and it's a gutter because he's another one of those players that this year has been up and down with injuries and, and just general consistency because he's struggled for fitness at points in the season. Um, and it's just a real, it's a real kind of gut punch to what looked like a side getting back to full fitness. We're now a little bit weak on that left-hand side. We don't have many naturally left-sided attackers. You know, we don't have that great depth that you would want we have Lewis Palmer now in that set. We played Yang at the weekend. He's a right-sided player. Mikey Johnson's away on loan. Uh, James Forrest is a right-sided player. Uh, Marco Tellio, he's away on loan and also a right-sided player. Uh, Kuhn is a right-sided player. We seem to have numbers and depth on that right-hand side, but when it comes to the left, we don't really have it. And I've seen people maybe suggesting we experiment and put Kyogo out there because he's played a bit of his career on the left-hand side, but that's not what he's been familiar with at Celtic. Uh, not with Hans Postacoglu and not now with Brendan Rodgers and it's not the time to experiment if you're wanting to play Kyogo you play him where he's best and that's up front when there's five games and a season to win a league title you don't start experimenting as good as Adam has been and as much as I like him I wouldn't sacrifice Kyogo on the left hand side to try and supplement something that may or may not work we are now relying on Lewis Palmer getting fit and staying fit from here to the end of the season if we want an effective left winger this is a blow for us, there's no denying it. I think it's a blow that we can handle. I don't see it being detrimental to our chances in winning the league title this season, but it certainly does take a little bit out of our side and the attacking side of things, um, which may be hard to recover. Um, I'm hoping it's one that he gets over pretty quickly in the summer. I hope the recovery isn't so bad. But it's a bit of an eye-opener, isn't it? It does show you that we need to go and sign someone that left-hand side. We've got Johnson loaned out, Haksabanovic loaned out. N none of those two players seem like they have a guaranteed future at Celtic. Um, we don't know if they have guaranteed quality either. We, we need to look in that area in the summer window, I think. Uh, but Dyson Maida, his season is over, sadly. Rogers went on to speak about how big a mess he is. This was some of his comments I'll put on screen. He's a huge player for us. Ideally, you try and nurse them back so they're perfect for the run-in, but it's a challenge. Rio had it come back a few times and broke down while away with the Japanese squad, so we need to be careful with him. We need to manage him and the likes of Callum McGregor, who had a fantastic cameo against Saints. But with Rio, any top player, you have to have the right plan for him to allow them to peak at the right time. Um, players just being a massive influence is, is, is generally what he's talking about and, and Maida is a big influence whether you love him you hate him you think he's good you think he's rotten he's an influence on this side and there's no denying that uh, and I just hope it's not a, um, you know, a damning miss from now till the end of the season Obviously, he touched on Liam Scales as well. His injury doesn't seem to be as significant and we should maybe expect to see him back soon. We'll wait for Brendan Rodgers to speak to the media this week ahead of the semi-final at Hamden to see if Liam Scales will be back for that game. But I'd imagine we'll see him sometime between now and the end of the season. It's just a matter of how soon. Um, but yeah, we, we're in a good place. It's just a bit of a gutter that while everybody comes back, McGregor, Vickers, Hitati, etc., Dyson Maida drops out. But it's been the story of the season. Not much else in the news to kick off the week. However, Celtic have been linked with yet another goalkeeper um, in the summer transfer window after the retirement announcement of Joe Hart. That takes us to four keepers now. We obviously have already heard about Ergekin Kachir, the Turkish goalkeeper. We've heard about Michael Zetera, the Werder Bremen keeper who was linked with us last week. And of course, Etienne Vasson, who was linked for, from Holland to, to perhaps be Celtic's goalkeeper option. However, the headlines uh, over the last couple of days is that Celtic are in the battle and in the race to try and sign Tom Glover from Middlesbrough Outlets in Australia, reporting that we are one of many sides looking to try and sign the young Australian. Uh, here was the headlines from Australia. Club's queue to snatch Socceroos understudy Glover from Borough. Um, here was the, the article Glo Government Tom Glover is being chased by Copenhagen, Celtic, Rangers and Newcastle United after a breakout debut season at Middlesbrough. Um, so yeah, another goalkeeper being linked with us. Uh, at this point, I'm just like, you know what, whoever it's going to be, it's going to be. I'm, I'm not fussed as long as we sign a goalkeeper who seems to be good. Seems to be getting good reviews from down south in the championship with Middlesbrough this season. Um so, yeah, uh, another name to add to the list to, to, to watch from now till summer. 
With two years left on his Middlesbrough contract, it looks as though Middlesbrough might need to be ready to sell. Middlesbrough, of course, won't be promoted this year, despite being one of the favourites to find promotion uh, as the season kicked off. But two years left in this deal, a lot of teams interested in him. 26 years of age and an Australian under-23 international um, being tipped to be the replacement for Matty Ryan when he decides to hang up the gloves for the Aussie national team. Looks decent, looks decent. Uh, out of the four we've been linked with so far, I think that you, you could probably make your own assessment as to who you would prefer. All four have their own um, kind of perks and and. and positives and negatives and whatever um i'm waiting to see what more comes out and, and more concrete links with each individual before i start diving in to, to suggesting they're the right option for celtic and uh, need to do my own research at that so yeah it's just another name that's been thrown out there so keep it in mind four goalkeepers now another four to go probably Right then, that is us for today to kick off the week. It's a bit of a later upload tonight. My apologies. I've been trying to get things sorted up here. Um, so, yeah. Um, thank you. If you've enjoyed, like and subscribe. Let me know all your opinions and thoughts in the comments below. But that's it for today. We'll be back in the channel tomorrow. Yeah. Happy days. I'll see you all next time.